Okay, so I want to talk about some of the scams that you may encounter in Istanbul. Now, I went to high school in Turkey. I've also visited the place many, many times and I've taken a lot of my friends from here and we're yet to have a bad experience out there. But there are scams that you need to know how to avoid because when I hear or see people getting scammed, I take it very, very personally. And that's why I'm making this video because I want to warn people on some of the things that you may encounter in Istanbul if you're not careful. Now I want to throw in a quick tip that a lot of people may not know, especially if you're here in the US, but you should know this. The US government issues travel alerts to every country out there. So if you haven't already done this, you need to check, I think it's ustravel.gov. I will put a link so you guys can find it. The whole idea of this is to warn people to visit or not to visit or to be cautious when visiting certain countries. Now, Turkey was on a reconsider level, which meant that if you don't have any business going there, don't go there. And that was in 2016, as well as 2017. And both those years I visited and nothing bad happened to me. So just putting it out there, always have that in the back of your mind, check that website. You can also register on that website if you're going to a country where there's a travel alert, where it doesn't seem to be that safe. When you register, the government knows that you're overseas and that's very important. Okay, anyway, back to Istanbul scams. Now, instead of telling you guys, watch out for this or watch out for that, right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you guys a story. Now, in one of my more recent trips, not my last trip, I went to Istanbul and I was with my ex at the time. And what happened was, been flying from LAX, from Los Angeles, it's about a 14 or 13 hour flight, it's really long. We were going to a different city, we were going to head to Antalya, but we had to, of course, land in Istanbul International Airport, and from there we had to catch our connecting flight. Now, there was a mishap in our connecting flight, so we were not able to catch our second flight. So I was at the airport talking to someone from Turkish Airlines at a little booth, and while talking to this guy, there were a group of other guys who were just standing right next to the booth. They were just within their ear shop, but they were doing their own thing. They had their luggage with them. It looked like they'd just gotten off a plane too. They were just talking. They seemed friendly. Now, the mistake that I made was I was acting a little bit worried and I was acting a little bit frantic because we were supposed to jump on a flight and go to a different city, but it seemed as we were not gonna be able to make that flight that night. That meant we had to find a hotel leave the airport and come back the next day and rebook the flight. So I was a little bit worried and I was trying to figure this out and I probably gave off the impression that I was a little bit lost, even though I'm very familiar with the culture and the language. And then what happened was my ex, after a few minutes, she said, hey, why does that guy have your suitcase? And when I looked down, I noticed my suitcase was no longer there these guys that were standing next to us had made off with my suitcase. Now, I was really lucky because when she told me that I could still see them and I just took off running. I ran after these guys and they saw me coming and they were trying not to make it obvious. It was a group of four or five of them and they started walking quicker and I saw the guy with my suitcase. Now, here's the thing. I have a really black Samsonite which looks very generic like a lot of other suitcases. So when this guy saw me approach, he tried to turn it around. So it kind of got shuffled with the other people's suitcases. But since I saw him do that, I was able to catch up to him and I snatched it out of his hand and started yelling at him. Now, his reaction was, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm such a moron. I can't believe I did that. His friends started making fun of him, but it was a complete scam. They were trying to steal from me. So I then realized that I had put my guard down because you're never supposed to let go of your stuff. Never let go of your luggage, never let go of that handle if you're talking to someone because the next thing you know, you're distracted, which I was really distracted. Someone will try to make off with it. And this is a common scam that happens in a lot of countries, a lot of European countries. So whenever we would take public transportation, my friends would always say, hold on to your stuff, man, hold on to your stuff. And they weren't just saying it because it's me and I'm forward. They were saying it simply because they do the same thing. We were on the metro and my buddy kept saying, hold on to your phone, hold on to your wallet, make sure you know where they are and make sure you know your surroundings. So these locals do this on a daily basis because they know that they're thieves. 
Do not let go of your stuff. Do not let anything that belongs to you out of your sight. And the main thing is be aware of your surroundings. Number two, I guess I'm doing a list now. The single male scam. This is very well known throughout Europe and it's especially well known around Taksim Square. Taksim Square is a beautiful place and I hope you do visit. The air, the atmosphere, the ambiance, the food, everything is magical there. But it also brings assholes too who will try to scam you. Now, you've probably read about this, you've probably heard about it, but if you haven't, I'm happy you're watching this video so you learn about it now. Single male scam is very, very simple. Someone will see you walking by yourself and they can tell you're foreign, so there's really no way to hide that you're foreign, right? What you really have to do is you have to take as little cash on you as possible. And I personally never take my passport with me. I take a photocopy of it and I carry very, very little cash. I may take a credit card because if that gets lost, I'm insured, I can get that back. But I don't carry a lot of cash on me. Anyway, single male scam, the way it works, you'll be walking like I am right here and you'll have someone approach you speaking the native language of that country. So in this scenario, it's gonna be Turkish. And then you're gonna say, well, I don't speak Turkish. And then the guy's gonna start speaking really good English and he's gonna say, oh, you know, I thought you were local. I thought you were from here. And then he's usually pretty well dressed and he's gonna say, well, would you like to have a drink? I just got off work. He looks like a very well put together, polished person and you're by yourself. You're a single male, I'm assuming. So you'll probably say, yes, why not? I'm making a new friend in a foreign country. And the story is always the same. This guy will probably take you to a place or two. The first place he may not do anything, but the second place he surely will. They'll take you to a place and then you guys will order drinks and the drinks will be extremely overpriced. And also there's a scenario where they'll actually have ladies join you guys on the table and then they'll start ordering food. And by the time the bill comes, either that guy disappears or he's still there and you have a tab of $800 or so, and you'll say, yeah, you know, let's split it or something like that. So you're still gonna end up paying about $400 or even more for very, very basic things. And they'll put a lot of pressure tactics on you. They will try to intimidate you to make you pay an overpriced bill. So, okay, I'm getting into a lot of details here. Long story short, you're there by yourself. Yes, it's great to make friends. I like doing that myself, I do it a lot. However, be very, very careful of someone who is being too friendly and who wants to go bar hopping with you and who starts ordering stuff on a joint tab with you because this is usually how this happens. When I meet people in foreign countries, I'll meet them at a bar. I never leave with them. I never go to places with them. I may get their information if they want to hang out. Maybe I'll just evaluate the situation based on that but definitely do not get solicited while walking around by someone who says, yeah, let's hang out because you're gonna end up with a really high priced bill. You're not even gonna know that this is happening till it's done. And the restaurant owner is going to harass you. They're gonna have a security guy who's gonna harass you. They'll try to take you to an ATM machine. So what you need to do is you need to carry very little cash on you and be aware of people coming up to you and trying to befriend you. If it's too good to be true, it always is. Same thing with ladies. If a lady approaches you, you might think you're getting lucky. Or maybe you might, maybe you will, I don't know. But usually this ends up with you going to a restaurant or a bar that's in on the scam, that's going to bring you food and drinks from a very, very high priced menu, and then they're gonna harass you. It may even appear as the person you're with is gonna split the bill with you, but that person is with them on the scam. So they're really not paying anything. They're just after your money. Okay, that's number two. Three, public transportation, of course, of course, watch this. I have some really silly wallets that I take abroad. One of them is an underwear wallet. Literally, it's an underwear where you can put your passport and all your stuff. I have a very dorky neck wallet. I do not ever put anything in my back pocket. I usually just have my cell phone in my pocket and my hand is always on my cell phone. I may have the equal enough $20 of that country's currency in my other pocket for emergencies or whatever. But anything valuable that I have on me is definitely going to be concealed very well because there are kids who know how to cut through purses, jeans, jackets to grab your stuff. Don't try to compete with these people. 
because these assholes do this for a living. They have all day to sit around and try to figure out how to rob you. They're poor. They don't have another source of income. So they prey on you and this is their livelihood. So don't fall prey or victim to this. All right. Another scam, this happens in a lot of foreign countries, fake police coming and asking you to show them your money or something like that. If you get approached by anyone who says they're law enforcement, this or that, simply offer to call the police yourself. Now, I didn't mention this, always have some type of cell phone plan or something where you can call for emergencies. So if anyone approaches you and is speaking in a different language, harassing you for any reason, tell them let's call the police right now they'll try to talk you out of it but when they see you're doing it they'll get the hell out of there so always have some type of emergency cell phone plan or something I have Sprint right now and I have unlimited roaming I used to get international plans with AT&T but since I switched to Sprint it comes with my plan and I only pay $50 a month so if you are looking for something for a plan to save some money and have some emergency minutes this is pretty much a free international plan where you can use as much data as you want you can call as many people as you want so that comes in handy a lot when I travel for GPS purposes okay what else avoid cabs do not even think about taking cabs if you take a cab you are a sucker now of course I don't want to be offensive if you're a family and you have all this luggage you may have to Turkish cabs are known for this they will rip you off Public transportation is what all the locals use. And of course, you have to be careful with that, right? Because there are scams that they try to do on those. But if you absolutely, absolutely have to take a cab, talk to your hotel. Your hotel is gonna have someone who speaks English. Tell them that you're gonna be taking a cab from the airport to the hotel. They will give you their number. Ask for their phone number and say, can I give this to the taxi driver? I need a phone number to give the taxi driver so he calls you. Make the cab call the hotel before you even get in there do not leave in a cab without having someone on your end communicate with the taxi driver or they will rip you off here's another story all right so i was running out of breath outside so now i'm at my place and i'm going to tell you guys another story so you can learn to avoid this scam now if you're ever going to take a cab in turkey as i mentioned before don't because you know public transportation is always fun to take you can learn a lot about a culture when you take public transportation you see how the rest of the world lives but the thing about cabs you know they in countries where uber doesn't exist and turkey is one of them still right now cabs will prey on you okay so here's a story i was in turkey or in istanbul with an ex and we were going to sultan ahmed square now, if you've never heard of it or never seen it, I hope you check it out. It's an amazing place. Now, while going to Sultan Ahmed Square, I had no issue taking a cab simply because the hotel that I was staying in went ahead and called a cab for us. So they communicate with the taxi drivers and they tell you how much it should cost. So there was no issue there. My concern was on the way back, I thought I may have some issues. We went to Sultan Ahmed Square, had no issues on the way back. I went to a taxi stand. Now in Turkey, there are things called taxi stands where you go to a place where there are many cabs parked and there's one guy who is sort of directing people, take this cab, take that cab, he talks to you first and then sends a cab or sends you to a cab. So I went up to this guy and I said, I'm trying to get to this hotel, here's the address. And the guy said, okay, we can do that for you. However, there's a lot of traffic right now so we need to go this other route. And I know that other route is a completely wrong route. It's just much, much longer. And he was pretty much saying we have to take the long route. He was telling me that in Turkish and I said no. So then we walked off. So as we walked off, another cab driver from the same taxi stand came running after me and said, sir, I'll take you the route that you wanna go, let's go. So what I did was I gave him the business card of the hotel and I said, can you call them? And he said, yes, no problem, I will call them. So my mistake here, I got into the car before he called him. So if you get into the car and he's acting like he knows where he's going, he knows the place. And there was a lot of traffic. So we were in traffic for a very long time, for over an hour. And then as we get a bit closer to the vicinity, the guy says, uh, where is this hotel? I don't know where it is. And I said, well, you told me that you were gonna call them. And you also said, you know where it is. 
And the guy said, I don't have a cell phone, I can't call them. So that's when I said, okay, this guy is trying to mess with me now. So I started getting a little bit impatient with the guy. And I said, the first thing I said to you was, do you know where this place is? And can you call them? And you said, yes, for both. So this guy started going to different taxi stands and asking them for directions on how to get to this place. I had their business card with me and I gave that to him. And I just thought he was trying to run up the taxi meter. So in the meanwhile, what happens is, remember, he told me he does not have a cell phone. And in this particular trip, I had an emergency plan on my cell phone, which meant that I could use it for emergencies with very few minutes that I could use internationally. This is before I switched to Sprint with unlimited roaming. And I wasn't going to use it unless I absolutely had to. So I was trying not to use that at the time. So this guy says, I do not have a cell phone. And he keeps stopping at different taxi stands, asking them for directions. He would get outside of the car, have conversations with them. And meanwhile, I'm looking at the taxi meter. And at this point, it's already double what we paid while going out there. And um, funny thing, before we even got to Turkey, I told my ex, I said, I absolutely do not like dealing with taxi drivers in this country. I think I'm probably going to get into an argument with one at some point. And this happened to be that day that I was going to get into that argument with someone or a taxi driver. So anyway, the guy gets back into the cab and he keeps saying, I can't find it. I can't find the place. It's getting kind of dark. My ex is getting a little bit concerned. And all of a sudden we hear a phone ring and his phone rings and he answers it. And he's trying to talk very quietly in the corner as if he can't see it. He's, he pretty much said, you know, let me call you back to someone. And he answered it and he hung up. And then when he put the phone away, I'm talking to him in Turkish. I said, now can I use your phone or now can you use your phone to call this hotel? And then he said, sir, I swear to God, it's a prepaid phone. I can't this and that. And I said, look, I said, I don't care. I told you, do you know this place? And you said, yes. And I said, can you call it? And you said, yes. And you didn't do any of them. So I started applying some pressure on this guy. And what I did was I was sort of leaning, you know, how you have two front seats. He's in the, pa he's in the driver's side. Here's a passenger seat. I was just kind of leaning in between and just talking to him really closely, just kind of saying, look, I told you to call this place. You said you would, and now you don't have a phone, but you have a phone and all this stuff. And he was getting stressed out. You could hear him breathe. He was getting a little bit anxious. My ex was sort of telling me to calm down a bit, saying, you know, don't, you know, don't get too upset with this guy. So a few stops later, when, when I mean stops, he's stopping at different taxi stands and asking people for directions. And then he starts driving a little bit more erratic between side streets and back streets. I almost felt like saying, just leave us here and we'll figure it out. But it was getting dark and I didn't know where the hell we were. Finally, finally, he finds the place. And when he finds the place, we pull into the driveway of the hotel and it was a really nice hotel. You know, there's a ballet and there's security and stuff. So I tell my ex, I said, get out of the car. I'm going to deal with this guy. So she gets out of the car and I tell the guy, I said, look, there's no way I'm paying you what's on that taxi meter. And the taxi meter was over three times the price of what I paid to get out there. And I had budgeted myself. I had just enough to pay the same amount that I paid on the way. And I told him, I said, this is what I paid on the way and this is what I'm going to pay you. And then he started protesting and saying, look, I'm working for free if I do that. Come on, you know, you need to give me a little bit more. And I said, look, this is all I have. Let me go to the reception. Maybe if they have a little bit more, maybe 10 Turkish lira more or something, I'll give that to you. Which, by the way, at the time, 10 Turkish lira was maybe the equivalent of $3 here in the States. So it was very little. Now it's even less than that. So I went to the front desk and I said, hey, you know, I gave this guy 50 Turkish lira for this trip. He has a taxi meter that's showing about 160. I'm not going to give him that. Can you just give me 10 Turkish lira or something and just put it on my tab, on my room or whatever? And they did. And I came back and I gave the guy 10 Turkish lira more. So I gave him 60 and the taxi meter was 160. So I was, I was ready to get into fight with this guy because he had really pissed me off. And he just kind of looked and laughed and said, you know, I, I can't, I can't. And I said, well, I can't either. And then he said, okay. And he drove off and that was that. So, okay, long story short, here's what the takeaway from this lesson is. I messed up because I got into that cab without this guy calling the hotel. Next time, what I will do is this. I will call the hotel first if I have to take a cab. I will get someone on the line and then I will put that person on the phone with the taxi driver 
So they tell him exactly how to find the place and where it is. Or if you don't have a phone plan that can do that, make the taxi driver call that hotel in front of you and don't get in the car before he does that. The hotel is gonna fight for you. They're gonna get you a fair rate. If you don't, then you're just in the hands of a crook. Now, I'm not saying that all Turkish cab drivers are crooks. That's not the case, but a lot of them are. So my point is, don't get cheated, don't get scammed. And I hope that in the country that you guys live in, wherever you may be, you do watch out for these types of things and you do stand up for the tourists who come to visit you because they're visiting your country. They have the best intentions to come out there. They're spending money out there. Don't let crooks take advantage of them and stop them from visiting again. And I hope this video helped and I'll catch you guys next time. This was a pretty long explanation and a long